The Road Trail Run team has put in thousands of miles and reviewed over 100 shoes so far this year. They're going to share some of their favorites and run shoes and gear and also how they've been maintaining their motivation to run during these trying times. Okay, here, uh, Sam from Road Trail Run. And uh, we're with our team, our entire team, just about here from all over the world. Uh, at the top next to me, you got Juiced in Angola, Africa, Luanda. You got Derek in Singapore. You got Jacob Brady in Portland, Maine. You got, uh, then you got Sally Riley in Marblehead, Massachusetts. Hope Wilkes outside of Washington, D.C. Ryan Ryan's in, in the in the Boston area. Don is in Boulder, Colorado, and Michael is in Chicago. So what we're going to do today is uh, share. The team is going to share with you their some of their favorites so far in 2020. I just like to give you a few statistics about what this incredible team has reviewed. Uh, 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 often in multi-tester form, we've we've reviewed over a hundred shoes so far this year. Uh, plus many articles on other other um, other running oriented uh, stuff. So this is a crew that has a ton of experience. Okay, off to you, Sally. Okay, so I'm Sally. I live in Massachusetts, um, where COVID was a really big deal for a while, and I actually got hired by Partners in Health to do contact tracing. And today they're going to lay off a bunch of us. <laughs> so. Um, we'll see what happens, but uh, running has been my routine and salvation. Uh, bummed not to have any races. I was doing the Boston Marathon, and this was going to be my year to really fly. And then I had Chicago. It hasn't been canceled yet. So we run every day just to clear our head and keep a routine and keep healthy and whatever. So um, I'll start off by saying the first shoe I really fell in love with this year was the New Balance fuel cell TC. And it was just a wow, I love the shoe moment. And I wasn't expecting much. I've never really been a New Balance person. But it just it's so you put it on and you feel like you're walking around in slippers, but you run in it and it responds and it's quick and it's comfortable. And I kept finding myself putting more and more miles on it. The second shoe that I really fell in love with was the Saucony Endorphin Speed. I also have run in the Pro. As you can tell, the Pro is still kind of clean. That's their marathon shoe. And without a race to do and a marathon to run, um, I haven't put as many miles on it. But the Speed is just, it just rolls your foot forward. Yeah, I, you look at your watch at the end of a run, it's like, wow, my pace was faster than I felt. Um, it's comfortable, it fits great, hugs your foot, and as I said, you just kind of roll in the shoe. It's been really a pleasure to run in, and I've put in, I think, 150 miles so far, despite all the other shoes. Uh, one accessory I'll say I have really loved this year, since there's no PT to go to, no chiropractor, no massage, is this little gizmo is called the sidestep. Um, it's a scraper. It's basically giving yourself your own Graston treatment. You just scrape your muscles and they loosen up and it's been kind of a savior. The other accessory, of course, was, of course that we have the buffs that we wear every day. But um, guys, sorry to say this, but I really love the Tracksmith run bra. It's just um, the most comfortable sports bra I've ever had. So uh, more in 2020 to come, I hope, and I'm sure there will be. So there are lots of other great shoes out there as well. Okay, uh, Juice, do you want to keep going? I'm Joost. Um, I'm originally Belgian. I live in Angola. And that's for the people in the U.S. That's not the prison. It's a country in Southern Africa. And um, I've been living here for a number of years. It's uh, mainly tropical. And we've had a lockdown for three months now, more or less. Um, it's been loosened up a little bit, but I got used to uh, running uh, in a radius of two kilometers <laughs> from my place and uh, and I can easily squeeze out a half marathon or whatever in in that in that area of two kilometers uh, if if I get creative so it's been it's been interesting um, because we also have limitations on the times of day when we can run or not so um, 
but I've been able to get in my training. Uh, Race-wise, there's nothing really planned, but I've started training for Chicago anyway, since it's not been officially canceled. Uh, I was going to do London, but uh, that will be next year, hopefully. Um, and then we'll take it from there. Um, Shoe-wise, uh, I was, I was kind of checking. Uh, I haven't reviewed as, uh, that many shoes for the site, but um, I've, I've got quite a few pairs in this year. Um, uh, uh, the ones I like the most, I'll start with that, is the last pair I got, which is uh, probably high on everybody's list, is the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Um, just got it last week. Um, I had uh, two longish runs in it, and I did a, a track comparison with a couple of other shoes, um, uh, just to you know to 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 get a feel for the the, the effort I have to put into to get a, a decent pace. And I have to say, even after putting these on right after uh, my training pair of four uh, percent uh, fly knits uh, I preferred this uh, the endorphin to the other ones um, as far as an everyday running shoes concerned I've I got the um, the, the peg 37 uh, which were white at some point um, uh, <laughs> I, re I kind of I really enjoy them my impression of them is a little bit different from other people I, I, I find them soft people tend to find them uh uh they have a, a more more uh, uh harsher right I, I i don't really agree and another pair i just got in let me just reach down which i really really like as well it's another pair of Sauconies, the right 13 um which i've been grabbing for basically all my easy running lately um except when i really want to run in something else because they they're comfortable um they have a, a nice bouncy feel to it and they just keep on keep on going um for the other pairs i have are more uh, racing related or, or for shorter shorter distances i've got uh, the speed elites the um uh, uh, Sketcher Speed, Speed Elite, uh, which I also really like, uh, but the upper, the Sketcher's uppers don't really go well with my feet. Um, I got a, a, a pair of these, which I also really like. It's the London Pro. Uh, I don't, I don't know if we've actually officially reviewed this one. It's the kind of the, the the cheaper version of the the Float Ride Run Fast Pro from Reebok. Um, it's very close to the, the ground. It's, you can actually feel everything. It's a great shoe to take to the track. It's got great traction on the track as well. Um, I can really um, uh, recommend that one. Another one I also really like. Let me reach down again. To review for Road Trail Run is the Sonic Accelerate. Uh, which is also one of my favorite everyday shoes uh, so far for 2020. Uh, I haven't really reviewed any uh, other stuff uh, so far, so I guess for me that's it. Hi, I'm uh, Derek. I'm from Singapore. I mostly run marathons, and like everybody else, all our races have been cancelled. So what I've been doing lately is mostly a time trial every four or five weeks, just to keep my fitness going, keeping my motivation up. I was down to do Chicago as well. Um, I think even if it isn't cancelled, I might have trouble getting into the country. So uh, that's still up in the air. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, moving on. Um, I think like a lot of people have mentioned, uh, my favorite trainer of the year so far is the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. It has a very, very bouncy ride. I think this really surprised me because uh, New Balance historically hasn't given produced shoes with very bouncy characteristics. Uh, looking back at their, their previous shoes, um, I put a lot of mileage in this and uh, I, it pretty much handles every kind of pace from very slow eight, nine minute mile recovery paces all the way down to sub seven miles. Uh, handles long runs really, really well, really keeps you fresh. Um, 
And in terms of shoes that surprise me, and I'm surprised nobody has brought it up yet, but the Saucony Endorphin Shift is something that I really wasn't expecting to like a whole lot, but um, I reach for it quite a lot these days. It has a lot of stack, okay? I think probably only the Hoka Bondi and maybe even the Alpha Fly are, are close in terms of stack. And I think what really works for this shoe is that it actually has very good balance. Despite having a lot of foam underneath, it doesn't have that bottom heavy feel to it. The, the, the upper and the bottom balances out very well and it runs much lighter than it actually weighs when you start running in it. Uh, part of it is because of the geometry and what, what Saucony calls their speed roll geometry up front. Uh, in terms of races, uh, my favorite so far is actually, uh, like other people have mentioned, the Endorphin Pro. Um, it is a firmer kind of bounce compared to the Nike races, but uh, it relies more on a roll rather than the bounciness of the foam. Uh, and it, I actually did a time trial in this uh, about two months ago, and I set a local PB uh, in Singapore weather. Uh, Singapore is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit year round pretty much. Uh, and I ran just under 36 minutes in this, in this pair for 10K. So I was really happy with this one. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to be wanting to try this if uh, they find that they have problems with fit with the, uh, the Nike racers or if they find the Nike racers a bit too soft and unstable. I think this one will, will solve a lot of their problems. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, Next up, Don Reichelt from Colorado. I live in beautiful Colorado. I run primarily on trails, but uh, I've been working a lot on speed and getting faster. I focus on 100 plus mile distance and I'm starting to make my way towards the, the track to do some 24 hour racing as well. So um, I've got three shoes. Uh, I'm going to jump right in. Salmon in route three. Um, this shoe, it, uh, it blew me away. So it, um, I, I'd never run in a Salmon before, Salming, and I didn't know what to expect. I was like, yeah, Salming, I heard about them. They showed up on my front step, I put them on, and I haven't wanted to take them off since. Like, this is my go-to every day. Uh, faster stuff, shorter stuff, just, just bulk miles. I probably have 300 or so miles in this pair. Um, it is holding up really, really nicely. So, a uh, really great ride for just about anything for me. Um, I might consider this for a 24 hour race as well. So, a uh, really great shoe. When I'm on the trails right now, uh, this Torrent 2, this shoe is unbelievable. Uh, it, I had some issues with the original Torrent, with the upper specifically, and uh, Hoka did a great job of redesigning this upper, and it is, it is unbelievable. This might be one of the best uppers of any shoe I've ever worn for my foot. So like they literally took something that made the Torrent 1 a shoe I couldn't wear to uh, probably my favorite trail shoe. This shoe has 200 plus miles on it right now, and um, it's really not backing down from the fight. So uh, really great shoe for, for faster days on the trail. It doesn't have a rock plate, so I wouldn't take this up in Rocky Mountain National Park to do some big mountain runs with, but gosh, for the bulk of my trail running for, for longer days, um, I have a couple of uh, probably three or four 20 plus mile days on this shoe, and it is, uh, man, it, it just does not back down from a fight on the trail. So uh, Torn 2, give it a try, and then for my fast stuff, I'm somebody that I don't love a plated shoe. Uh, they just have never worked for me. So um, I've been really loving this Escalante racer. Um, I've probably put a hundred miles on this between, I've got a dirt track just up the road for me. So I, I spent a lot of time on the dirt track doing speed work and then uh, on the pavement doing time trial stuff. This is super lightweight. It's, a, it's an unbelievably light knit upper that just, does everything I need. Like I said, I'm, I'm not somebody that loves a plated shoe. Um, so this, this foam and, and just everything that, that Ultra has put into this Escalante racer really works well for me. Uh, those are my three go-to shoes right now, probably between these three. If I'm not reviewing something, 95% of my time running are, are in these three shoes right now. Um, quick shout out to Tracksmith. They sent some apparel my way and I put 50 miles on the trails this weekend with it so it's in the laundry right now otherwise i'd have it to show off but um what tracksmith is doing with their apparel right now the liner in the shorts um 
I think you can tell a lot about an apparel company based on the liner they put in their shorts. And one run in Tracksmith told me everything I needed to know about them. That liner, um, it hugs and it uh, appropriately uh, does everything it needs to for 30 mile runs for me. So uh, kudos to Tracksmith for what they're doing. I'm with you, Don, on those shorts. I'm, uh, the best shorts I've ever worn. So, yeah, that's yeah. incredible. Just They just disappear. Okay. Thank you very much. So, I see maybe we uh, go next to Jacob up in Portland, Maine. Um, I'm Jacob. Like Sam said, I live in Portland, Maine. I run a pretty even mix of roads and trails depending on the season and what I'm training for. Um, so I would like Sally, I was training for Boston doing the most mileage I've done and uh, then it got canceled. But um, a lot of my running was outside of my running goals was outside of training for a race. Anyways, I've been just having my goal be to run every day for uh, a couple months over two years now. Um, and so I just kept doing that and enjoying testing shoes. Um, so to start out my f overall favorite shoe of 2020. And it's my favorite in several categories, and it's been mentioned by two of us so far as the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. Um, I just have not really experienced anything like the ease of running effect I get from this shoe. It's um, sort of similar to the Vaporfly, except it's more relaxed and it can it works well at a slower pace and has a more accommodating upper. So it just extends that uh, that a feel of not having to try to run to um, easy runs or long runs and it's definitely been my go-to long run shoe I think I've done maybe five or six runs over 20 miles in this shoe and no runs over 20 miles in any other shoe in 2020 so far so I've been loving it um, and then another pick just as an all-around trainer uh, has been for me the A6 Nova Blast. Uh, I'm a fan of higher stack, bouncy, uh, modern foams in general, and this is a similar, just like the TC has that uh, high rebound sink in effect, but um, it's not mushy at all. It has great spring. Uh, I feel like it works well for me at a really slow recovery pace as well as up into the half marathon pace. Um, so, pretty enjoyable shoe every time I choose it. I'm, Glad I, glad I did. So uh, those are my picks for road shoes. I have uh, two shoes here for that are noteworthy for trail shoes so far. The first is the Saucony Switchback 2. Um, I had not run in any shoe with the BOA closure before. Um, and I just think it works great. It's a so convenient to uh, be able to adjust on the fly if needed. I had a, one run in them where the trails changed from uh, pretty smooth to a uh, little bit more technical with a lot of roots. And I reached down like in maybe less than a second and was able to tighten both of them. So rather than having to stop and unlace and relace, uh, I, it's a surprising benefit having that boa closure. Um, and then also the Power Run Plus midsole in the shoe is just, uh, it's very enjoyable to run in, quite flexible, even with the, the rock plate. Uh, and I think it makes it have an enjoyable ride, but also um, like a good rebound characteristics at higher speed. Uh, and I do a lot of door to trail stuff because of where I live. So half the run will be on trail, half of it will be on like roads or dirt paths. And the like a, a three millimeter lugs on this thing just make it work really well on smooth terrain as well so it's been a great all-around shoe I've worn them walking around a bunch as well and then my last pick this would be just an overall um, top trail shoe right now is the Merrill MTL Skyfire this is a, a value shoe at a, just a hundred dollars and an EVA midsole but I think it has a great great bounce that also works well on the road uh, good security so you can Go, I think I could take this in the mountains as well as on the most technical terrain, but uh, also do door to trail stuff with it. So it's amazing versatility and good uh, midsole characteristics and a nice ride from just EVA here. So a surprising shoe for me, but I've been loving it. And that's Great it. Picks. 
Okay, so next up, um, uh, let uh, Ryan. Hey, everybody. Good to put some uh, voices to shoe reviews. Um, I'm Ryan, representing RTR here in Boston. Um, been getting slower ever since I was 18, so I'm more of a distance guy these days. Uh, I had planned on trying to qualify for Boston 2021, but uh, with each day that ticks by, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, so in response to that, I sign up for a beer mile about a month from now, which I would agree is just as difficult. So we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know what shoes I pick. But uh, I'll keep it short because beating a dead horse here, but uh, it's a great shoe. The Saucony's Endorphin Pro. Um, Super exciting. It was like early Christmas when this showed up on the porch. Um, it just it doesn't feel like a Nike Vaporfly knockoff at all. It feels like they started from scratch, did a really great job constructing this thing through and through. Uh, it fits like a glove. It's really stiff, but when you really want to rip, um, the this Power Run PB midsole is just, it feels like a little bit of magic, really. It makes you feel better than you actually are. Um, and you can see, um, I think Derek already pointed out with this speed roll technology here, the shape through the forefoot is, you know, it's definitely different. It's not too aggressive, but it gives you a little bit of extra boost when you're really trying to push pace. Um, so, you know, it's not cheap enough to use as a daily trainer, but when you can bust this thing out and, uh, you know, for special events, it's, it's really something fun. It's going to be hard to keep it white for long, but uh, I've been really impressed by not just this shoe, but a lot of the stuff that Saucony's put out this year. So. That's my pick for the uh, longest six months of, in history. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, uh, uh, Hope, do you want to go next? Sure. I've got three shoes here. I'll, I'll uh, I guess, go descending order of weight. A uh, little bit of an echo here, but I've got the Saucony Ride 13. Um, close readers of Road Trail Run will know that I'm pretty obsessed with the New Balance 1080 V9, which I just won't shut up about. And I, I think of the Ride 13 as a slightly firmer, slightly more responsive version of that shoe. Um, upper locks down great, road feel is great. Um, really a, a, a fun and, and surprisingly fast shoe uh, given the, the very traditional design and, and again, that above nine ounce weight. Um, the second one I, I have here is the Saucony Endorphin Speed. I like this one a little bit better than the Pro for myself. Um, I'd like to be able to take my go fast shoes out for a lot of a lot of occasions, not just races. Um, and I, I feel that one is a bit more durable. I, I do enjoy the Ultra Svelte uh, Pro, but but for my my use case, um, the speed the speed is a shoe. And the the third one I have here is the Asics Meta Racer. Um, I, I, this was a, a 10 out of 10, my, my first ever 10 out of 10 shoe. Um, I've continued to run it since then, and I, I, I love it just as much. Um, the upper is a, is a great wrap for my foot. Um, I like that the plate is under the sole, so you get the comfortable midsole foam, and then the, the plate is right above the road, and it's got, it's got great snap, great, great roll, um, and great looks which uh, also helps with race day performance, which, you know, someday we'll have. Uh, during COVID, I, I've become a nighttime runner. I used to be waking up 4 or 5 a.m., and now I'm staying out till maybe 2 a.m., doing a long run, depending on, on when I start. So that's, that's been a change. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Oh, uh, and I think we still have Michael. Michael in Chicago. Hey, I'm Michael Ellenberger. Uh, like Sam said, I run in Chicago primarily, uh, almost exclusively on roads and sidewalks. Fortunately, more roads now than sidewalks since they've closed some streets here. Um, I'm lucky if I get crushed gravel or, or hard packed dirt, but you know, and even when I have that, it's not, uh, it's, it's straight and flat. There's no uphills and downhills here. So I'm mostly a road runner. Um, when it comes to trainers, there's kind of three that I thought about as, as my favorite of the year. I only have one of them here in front of me. Derek talked about it. This is the Saucony Endorphin Shift. A really kind of, like Derek, it's a, it's a chunkier trainer than I thought I would like. It's got a lot of stack. It's, it's reasonably heavy, um, but it's just a, a blast run. My first run in it was 20 or 21 miles on a surprisingly hilly um, park reserve that, that really made me fall in love with it. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Treyu. They have a, a, a kind of the opposite end of a, of a trainer, which is a 5.5 ounce, really minimal um, trainer that I've put over 250 miles on and love. Um, and then I think my favorite absolute trainer of the year is, uh, is the 
uh, Skechers Go Run 7 Plus Hyper, which I think is just like a, a picture perfect trainer. I, I um, you know, I, I think a lot of us love the 7 Go Run 7 Hyper from last year, um, but had some issues with the upper. They fixed that this year. It's, it's about as good as a, a lightweight trainer as you can get. And, and I love putting miles on that thing. Um, for racing, you know, I, I also love the, the Endorphin Pro. I think that it's the closest thing to a, a Vaporfly competitor we've gotten so far. I just kind of wanted to highlight a couple other good options and Hope uh, got me a little bit with the Meta Racer, which is, is a really just like fun shoe. And I think if I had to go out and race, uh, you know, a 10K or a half marathon tomorrow, um, this would certainly be uh, in contention. And then I, I want to give a little bit of love to kind of the unloved shoe, which is the, the Brooks Hyperion Elite. It's already been replaced. It was on the market for like four days or something. Um, you know, it, it's a firm ride undoubtedly, but I, I really like it. I, it's probably the, it is the racing flat that I put the most miles on um, this year, which is sort of antithetical because it was panned for having um, a short lifespan. I mean, the most on a racing flight is still only about a hundred, but after a hundred miles, I, I have no issues with this and, and I would go racing it again tomorrow, you know, if I had to. So I think those are great choices. Like I said, the endorphin pro is, is obviously a top of the market shoe as well, but there's a, you know, fortunately a lot of really good options right now. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I'm going to end up with a few picks of my own, but I want to thank everybody. I don't know if my, my picks will make the, the a roll, but I um, want to thank everybody. What a great lineup. I, I wrote mine down uh, earlier. Uh, so um, I'm going to echo uh, quite a few of the road shoes that everybody uh, mentioned, starting with the Meta Racer, which I would agree would be 10K to half marathon. It's just such an elegant, elegant ride. Um, and the upper is just fantastic. Uh, I think my pretty much in a tie, my favorite two shoes of the year so far, though, are the Endorphin Speed and the TC both sort of in the more up-tempo, uh, but fully capable of doing training. Also like the Ride 13 for its, um, for its response and cushion. And in a bit of a surprise, but I guess if uh, folks have followed us, I like the Pegasus 37 for women because it's a bit softer and the airbag is a little bit, uh, has a little less pressure. It's a smooth workouts kind of shoe. And um, then on the trail, um, uh, I, before this weekend, the Solomon Sense Pro as my faster shoe was really top of the uh, top of the, the, the pile, but um, just got in the catamount. And as with all these shoes, boy, we're going to just keep going through the year. Um, the Brooks catamount, which has the same mid midsole as uh, Hyperion Tempo and the upcoming Hyperion Elite. So it's the DNA flash nitrogen infused, just fantastic. Um, and then I'm going to give a shout out also to the Saucony Exodus 10, uh, the all around shoe, if you will, a kind of a heavy trail shoe, but fantastic on any trail, any road. It's sort of your pile on the miles kind of shoe. Um, and then um, just a few apparel and kind of accessories. Uh, crazy about Odlo, for, which is a Swiss Norwegian company. Uh, incredible fabrics. Uh, although their shorts don't match up to those wonderful tracksmith. Uh, and then if you do use uh, trekking poles, uh, there's nothing like the Lecky MCT Carbon 12, incredibly light trekking pole uh, that folds up in a, in a heartbeat. So the year is still young. We're only halfway through. The team is out there. We're going to be seeing more shoes. We're looking forward to the, uh, the, the racing complement to the New Balance. Um, uh, Fuel Cell TC, the RC, uh, um, Jeff McIntyre, who isn't with us on the call today, has done the Alpha Fly. We're looking forward to maybe doing some more of that, as well as the, oh boy, it's confusing, the, uh, the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro, uh, not to be confused with the uh, Adio, uh, Adi Zero Pro, a more race flat shoe that'll match up with the Meta Racer. So keep, stay tuned to our channel. And of course, we all, our, our focus really is our multi-tester reviews over at Road Trail Run. I want to thank the team for uh, all their incredible work and also um, for their enthusiasm for running. And let's have uh, a better second half, if you will, as we uh, move through these trying times, but let's all keep running. So thank you very much for watching.